You ready? Do it to it. All righty. Okay, Rodrigo, would you like to welcome everybody? Bom dia a todos. É um prazer estar aqui com vocês. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. All right. Obrigado, Rodrigo. Uh, that is uh, the voice of one of the boot camp contributors that we will be hosting down in Sao Paulo in uh, June 24th and 25th. Is that right, uh, Rodrigo? Yes, that's right. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, can, part, of, uh, part of what we're doing here is uh, we're inviting people from the community that aren't uh, necessarily uh, a regular participant on TSC meetings to, to help uh, cross-pollinate what goes on in the community with, with the TSC and, and vice versa. Uh, so uh, Rodrigo will be volunteering at the boot camp and maybe you could give uh, the audience a feeling for uh, what you and your colleagues do with, with Hyperledger irrespective of the, the boot camp. Thank you, Dan. Yes, uh, we're very excited to, to have you in Brazil, the first ever boot camp in, in our region, in Latin America and South America. Uh, right now, we're going through the, the, the marketing campaign. We want to gather as many people as we can to join us in Sao Paulo, uh, so we can reach out for as many new contributors as, as we can. Uh, so the community is growing. Uh, since UPKD joined the project at the end of 2018, uh, we've seen lots of, of newcomers coming to talk to us and learn a little bit more about Hyperledger and how they can work with us and how can they help develop the ecosystem, our region. So we are very glad to, to when we heard that Sao Paulo was going to host the, the next boot camp. We're glad to, to, to help you guys and help the community grow here. Excellent. Thank you for taking uh, some time to help welcome everybody to the meeting today. Uh, and do you have a handle on Rocket Chat if anybody wants to connect with you there? Yes, uh, it's Rod. Very easy. R O D. Pretty easy. All right. Well, thanks again, Rod. Uh, You're welcome. Any, any questions for, for Rod before we move along? Okay, uh, you know how to find him if you would like to, and I hope everybody uh, gets involved to the extent that they can for the boot camp. Uh, you'll see that that is updated on the announcements to reach out to Salona if you have uh, questions, comments, offers to support that. Uh, Rai, would you like to update everybody on the two-factor authentication requirements? Sure, um, so I went through and reached out. This number is uh, incorrect. Um, we're down to three people that have right access to the GitHub org without two-factor auth. Um, so thank you to everybody who's been turning on their two-factor auth for GitHub. And uh, I, that's where we are. We have three people left. Okay, and great. Those people have not, uh, those three people have not made commits uh, for the last calendar year. So they're inactive, essentially. <clears throat> Do we know their email addresses? Can we email them directly or how? So uh, two of them, so number one, I reached out to the two of them on Rocket Chat because I was able to find their handles and mm -hmm. I sent email to one of them who I was able to get his email address. The other one uh, I reached out to on LinkedIn um, and he doesn't have an LFID. So, and I, I've done, I feel like I've done what I can. Um, that's what I've done. No, I, I, I mean, then why don't we just pull the trigger then if there's only three and you've done your best effort to reach out to them. I would like well, to. Well, is it, is it within our protocol that, that you could distribute those individuals to TSC so that if we personally know those individuals, we could uh, we could do that. Otherwise, you know, just go ahead and do just like what Chris said. I, I mean, there's nothing that keeps them from rejoining, right? And 
setting two factor. I mean, that's our policy. If if they set two factor off, they can come in in the future. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. At the oh, same time, if all the main contributors already, you know, already have two FA enabled, the exposure is very minimal. So. That's true. And yeah, these guys haven't contributed in a year. Yep. Um, so I, I know I'm on some threads about this. I don't recall. Uh, do we already have a thread to the TSC list that says this is going to happen? Yes. Okay. Uh, and did you give a timeline in that at all, Rye? Uh, soon. Soon? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, that's why I, I think we might want to give it another week or so and tell people this is when we're going to do it. Be ready. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm fine with that. Um, and you uh, had asked a, a good question earlier, Arno, which was uh, why doesn't this apply to uh, people who use Garrett? It will soon. Um, and all I can say is soon. I don't have a date. So uh, at some point soon, um, two-factor auth will be required to use LFID. If you put a TM after the soon, then it's okay. Well, I, just hear the air quotes, soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so what you're saying there then, Rai, is that LFID is going to enable two-factor auth on your LFID, is that correct? Correct, at some point in the future soon. Okay, so, and that's out of your control. It is, when we, yeah. switch, when we switch authentication providers, you won't see the old screen anymore. Okay. You'll see a new screen. Fair enough. So, I mean, uh, yeah, then maybe why don't we, can we just take a vote and say, let's do it in a week or something? Give them one last warning and I make okay, a proposal, I, we, we do it soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, uh, I would like to move that the TSC vote that uh, we enable two-factor auth at the conclusion of the TSC meeting next week. Two-factor um, auth for I'll GitHub. second that. Um, yeah, this is specifically for GitHub and the LFID thing is separate and that will... Uh, right, so this is specifically for the Hyperledger organization. Hyperledger Labs will come to later. That's another question, so. Do, do we have quorum, by the way? Uh, yeah, the only people we're missing are Nathan and Silas. Oh, there's, Silas is here. Um, yeah, I was late, sorry. Okay. All right, so I, I, um, I think Rai moved and I seconded. Great, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Uh, any TSC members opposed? TSC members abstaining. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Thanks for, for doing all that, Rye. Uh, just for, for everybody's benefit in the future, when we want to have a voting motion, it's much better if we have that written. This one is kind of trivial, so I'm not worried about it, but uh, it's nice to have explicitly in writing what people are voting for. So if we're going to go to the trouble of doing a vote, let's make sure that we've got some, some explicit text. Sure. Uh, for the next item, Salona is in the air. And I think we already kind of covered that the boot camp is coming up. Yep. So let's move on to RFC. All righty. So uh, again, we've got uh, the, the governing board is, is looking at 2020 direction and they want input from the technical community. And so that's what I'm working to channel to them. There is a link there to the wiki. Um, it's pretty broad, the kind of feedback that we're looking for, but do put some thought into the, the rationale. Uh, that will help us understand it when we try to uh, upstream that to the board. Uh, and it looks like we also have a heads up that there is a US holiday on the 4th of July that uh, I think a lot of the uh, participants will be out for. And that brings us up to the uh, first discussion topic, the greenhouse graphic, which Brian circulated on the list. Brian, would you like to speak about that? Yeah, and uh, don't have to repeat what I said on the, the list. Um, uh, I just uh, try to set a context for it, which is, you know, the most important thing we're trying to solve for is the fact that the existing 
graphic, you know, to which we've been adding logos as the as the projects have been started, uh, is you know growing kind of unwieldy. And I was finding that the term framework for for things like grid wasn't quite right. Um, and so uh, the the most important thing was to update that graphic in such a way that it would be it would make a little bit more sense. <clears throat> and and you know eventually if we had 200 projects obviously a big NASCAR style kind of logo uh, or a screen won't work. Um, uh, but I, I did want to to look at kind of updating the the taxonomy um, uh, just one one hair. It was not to try to say this is the only kind of map that could be drawn or or that there aren't better ways such as the CNCF trail map or or the way that some other projects might represent them. Or at some point maybe we do just get so big that like Apache or others it's just a big list. Um, but for the time being, I find it very useful the existing greenhouse graphic when giving a talk about Hyperledger just to say, here's the kinds of things going on, here are the kinds of communities we have. Um, you've heard of Fabric perhaps, or you perhaps have heard of Sawtooth uh, or Indy, here's, here's really everything else going on. Um, and, I, I, you know, then, and then to dive deep into each one of them you know, as, as time allows. Um, but uh, I, what we were hoping was just kind of a, you know, that the TSC would see this as a gradual improvement. And that, you know, absolutely the, the taxonomy was a first stab um, and could be changed the most. And we, it's always, uh, t <laughs> always, always tough to try to um, get projects to be comfortable with kind of how they're positioned. Um, and so um, very much wanted to work with the TSC on is the positioning and the, and the taxonomy right. Um, uh, but but not to forestall conversations about other ways to to look at the structure of our community. And how well engaged would you say that the marketing committee has been with working on that? So the the, the actual graphic redesign um, was something that uh, we had our in house at the Linux Foundation graphic designer do. Um, the taxonomy was something that frankly I took an initial stab at, and said let's go with this, take it to the TSC, and see what they think. Um, then um, we did consult with Dan O'Prey and um, Alyssa Worley about it as well, just to see if they had that input. Dan, by the way, is the guy who um, came up with the word Hyperledger. Uh, <laughs> um, started a company called Hyperledger that was acquired by Digital Asset, and then uh, that name was part of DA's contribution at the beginning of the Hyperledger project. Um, so uh, partly, you know, I mean, he's been a great participant. He might even be here on the call, I'm not sure. Um, Dan, if you're here, uh, let me see. Um, no, but uh, anyways, um, so it wasn't it wasn't something that we like broadcast out to the full marketing committee and got a lot of consensus around. It's not. You know, I don't want to oversell. Uh, kind of, you know, this is the firm belief of the MC. You know that we need to do this. Um, but it was at least in consultation with them. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I feel like the people that have selected for that marketing committee probably have a better handle on marketing language than, than I do as, as somebody who focuses more on engineering options. So um, I'm, I'm all for getting their input in, in a way that's efficient. So, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I think, uh, and, and I, I shared some of my thoughts here, but um, you know, we and uh, I, I know Brian, you re replied privately, but basically, at, at the end of the day, we're we're starting, and, and I think somebody else piled on this morning and sort of made a similar point, and that is, you know, we start getting so many things to talk about, and there's no time to really get into them, and so we're not really doing ourselves any favors by, you know going through the laundry list of all the things that are going on. And it's a good, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on, but you know, you don't, you don't hear Sam Ruby running around saying, talking about all 340 or whatever it is projects at Apache. You don't hear Mike Malinkovich talking about all 400 projects at Eclipse. Right. I mean, at, at some point you, <laughs> you have to talk a little bit more in generalities about the cool stuff that's going on, the collaboration, you know, the, uh, the enthusiasm, the number of people, and, and less about trying to sell each project on its merits or something like that. I think, um, you know, maybe that time has come, you know, when we have to be less about trying to sell the projects and sell the, instead the, the fact of the organization, the collaboration, the, the innovation, and so forth that's going on. I, 
Yeah, I mean, as I've, as I've said, if we were at 300 projects, that certainly we wouldn't do something like this, right? Um, if, if we were to talk, if we, we did have a taxonomy, then it would be, um, we'd start with that or, or start with a few of the leading projects or something. Um, but but you, and you've heard me talk. I, I do talk about all those other things too. And I tend to, if anything, spend less time on the projects than on the value of the whole um, than people might expect. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we are also uh, different from uh, Apache and I think certainly than it, um, uh, and possibly than Eclipse where we're really about a portfolio of these projects. Like who the, what, what the projects are is meaningful, right? The fact that there is, uh, are, are ways they build upon each other and then at other times compete with each other is meaningful. Um, and that's that, that meaning is what I, what I get across when I present. Um, and again, I don't dwell on this slide, you know, it's, it's a few minutes and then I go into uh, other topics or more specifics. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, um, just to get a lay of the land, just to like to get that, that initial top down view. Um, I mean, I could keep using the old graphic uh, <laughs> in my, in my talks, but um, I, uh, and, and other people I think who use this graphic in their talks find value in, in that kind of top, top down view, just to give a sense of what's the there there. You know? I think one of the ways you could look at this is uh, if you look at the, the drawing where you've got frameworks, you could change that to active and then to change that middle layer to incubation and leave the rest as it is. Um, it, because I think that's kind of actually what <laughs> it looks like right now is you've got the frameworks there that are active um, and then everything else. And I think that would make it fit all into one because really, the top two sections are just projects, right? And if you want it, you could just have one section that was projects and list all the projects and then the rest of the, the greenhouse. But I mean, those are a couple of different options where now you're not worried about, oh, this one falls into this bucket and this one falls into that bucket. It really is just, here's all the projects that we have and here's all the other pieces of the community that exists that you can get involved in. Yeah, I, I had made a point on, on the thread that I think we're getting too big. I mean, I used the existing greenhouse one. Uh, Chris and I did that in a presentation we were doing, and it, it's actually fairly hard to talk to, um, to try and give everything equal time. It takes up a lot. And I think we're at a point where we can just list the main architectural levels, if you will, and uh, make sure we can include all the other special or, or different activities going on like working groups and SIGs and things like that. Um, Hyperledger is much more than just the projects. And so to give just the projects the main thing in, in your main slide is, is really doing a disservice to the marketing committee and the special interest groups and the working groups and um, all the other activities going on. Well, that's why we, we added those to the, to the, the, to the greenhouse. Right, but it just makes the, the slide busier, which if it's too, if it's <laughs> too busy, <laughs> you know, so you don't list each project out. You just say, here's like frameworks, um, you know, you if we, say we have a few, a few blockchain projects, a few SDKs. So, hang on, there's, uh, Silas has been politely raising his hand. <laughs> yeah, no, just I, I, I slightly late saying this, but um, I've sent an email saying the same to, to the list, but just to flag, yeah, I think Burrow is in the wrong place. Um, it has a component usage by some other projects in terms of the EVM, but that is about 10% of what it is. Uh, Burrow is a fully fledged BSC ledger with contract, compile, deploy, event system, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. we, uh, the same. I mean, the same <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I saw that. Um, yeah, uh, don't mind being in two boxes, <laughs> but yeah, we should be in, in framework, but. Yeah, that's that, that's an easy change to make. I'm sorry for putting it down there. I just figured since the consensus layer um, in standalone builds on Tendermint, right? Um, uh, but but no no disrespect intended. We can put you back. <laughs> yeah, no. I think I mean yeah. We, we consider Tendermint as a library. We use it in a slightly non-standard way, I guess. Um, yeah, no. I see why it's in that box, but um, I think that would be misleading um, generally. Okay, that's an easy kind of change to make. Well, I, you know, I, I, it's it's hard to figure out what to do with feedback um, because I mean I'm giving presentations where I'm using a greenhouse and I and I've appreciated being able to show a map of some sort 
and I do feel like describing kind of differences in, 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 in groups of functionality is still useful, even though a different way to slice it is what's, what's active, what's still in incubation. That's certainly a way to, you know, a different kind of chart that can be shown and, and useful. But, but just when people ask, well, what is Hyperledger? What's going on there? What are you guys doing? You know, what kind of tech are you working on? You know, um, as, a, as a starting place, purely as a starting place, you know, it's, it's hard not to, I mean, uh, just talking verbally, well, we've got some frameworks, we've got some modules and libraries we're building, we've got some tools. I mean, that's how I would verbally start talking about things anyways, right? Um, and, um, and again, yeah, at, at 200, you know, we did a different way to, met, to do it. But it's, it's, I mean, it's the feedback from you, from you all that we should stop using the greenhouse graphic in, in our presentations, because it feels like something that we get value from, or should we just do something informally? I mean, uh, um, I'd like the TSC to be behind what we do or give us feedback on things, but you know, it's kind of a, a marketing graphic <laughs> at the end of the day. I think it's hard to design by committee, right? Right, I, I'm not opposed to having some kind of graphic. This is another evolution of, of it. Uh, I do think that you'll probably get better feedback from marketing people than the technical committee. I mean, we should definitely have a voice in making sure that things are uh, technically correct. So like, um, uh, like, like Silas clarifying the, the role of Burrow. But um, I don't see how you go and, and talk about Hyperledger without having some sort of graphic. Vipin? Okay. Um, and on the taxonomy front, in the thread of conversation, Sean did propose um, a slightly different layout. Um, and I and I forgot I need to pull it up um, uh, to read out what it was. Apologies for that. But uh, um, you know, we could start with with that and come back with an updated graphic uh, that shows that taxonomy layout, or or maybe just get convergence on the TSC um, on the list about what the right taxonomy is, um, and then and then we can create a new graphic from that. The taxonomy that you're also sort of asking for game which I, I feel is also a great job for people with marketing skills well that's a double-edged sword what was that <laughs> that's a double-edged sword asking the marketing people <laughs> <laughs> I see Vipin says hand up for a while yeah um, guys my comment is that this is not just a slide that Brian presents. It is also on the landing page of uh, hyperledger.org and is the first slide that people see, first graphic that people see. And I believe it should uh, be a live uh, sort of live sort of image in the sense that you should be able to provide different views as drill downs or other kinds of ways in which you can explore that uh, greenhouse it could have been a static image. Well, right, but <clears throat> so if you go to CNCF, for instance, it's just a, <clears throat> there's just a row of little glyphs and you hover over them and then there's a little hover over text that, you know, gives you the blurb, right? We don't have to follow their uh, uh, can, I'm, 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 but that's basically what you're describing. A no, static that is graphic not what I'm describing. Really tell you a whole lot, right? That it doesn't. Is not what I'm describing. I'm describing something that goes along with what Mark says, which is how the categories, and then you can drill down into those categories, and then uh, you you ha get help in uh, exploring this, not as a bunch of uh, a list of glyphs that is too confusing to the eye. Uh, it's it's a, it's a little more than you know. It is a little more than just a list. It has to be tiered. Okay, um, I think we're probably into the the level of this discussion that's going to be less productive. So, yeah, well, here, here's my suggestion. One is um, I'll repost um, 
Sean's uh, proposed taxonomy. I had a few things I wanted to move from it, but um, if we could focus kind of the conversation on the list on kind of convergence on on that taxonomy, that might be mo the most productive thing. And then secondly, um, yes, uh, Vipin's right. We do use this on the homepage. Um, I, I, we are making cha some changes to the, and this is the the, the www.hyperliterature.org homepage. Obviously, we're going to make some changes to how that's um, you know kind of works, anyways, um, and what your lead off from that is. And so, we're very open to talking about are there better starting points on the website for, our, for to help people understand kind of the shape of and the constituency of our of our community um maybe something like the cncf approach with the trailhead and and the listing and things is better um uh, but we'll take the that input and then come back to you but but again focus the tsc on the taxonomy might be the best uh approach for us in the short term does that make sense thanks and, and your use of the word convergence along there also reminded me that that's that's a good thing to keep in mind when you think about the the future state of hyperledger and, and what that graphic can uh, do for future proofing itself yes yeah not to overload it to be an architectural diagram but um i i maybe at some point it it, it starts to remind us hey maybe these two projects should be looking for ways to to work together on a common api or a common use of a library or something like that <clears throat> yep okay thank you brian all right, uh, next on the docket, we have the uh, smart contracts working group update. And uh, I think most people have had a chance to review that. Do we have any questions at this time for Sophia? Uh, well, I'm here to answer any questions, if there are any. And Sophia, well, people might be, um, bringing their questions to mind is there any uh point or two or three that you would like to highlight on the working group progress or issues yes yeah, sure sure yes and uh, there is a question from my side um because chris uh commented in this page if you can please scroll down we can see chris's uh, comment okay uh, well, uh, Chris said that uh, we are uh, working on, uh, um, on a wiki page where we are trying to separate the two concepts of smart contract and contracts. And the uh, Architecture Workgroups Volume 2 report was missing as a link. Uh, I surely added it, although I didn't have the time to review this uh, work, which was started uh, by Mark, um, who is uh, a member of our Marco, sorry is a member of our uh, working group. Um, we are working on this product. It's not finished for sure. We're adding uh, content and links. And uh, uh, from my side, I'm trying to make it as more uh, as a research paper as it can be. Um, I'm uh, a researcher, so this is my point of view. Others are from uh, the business uh, side, so they are their point of view. And we're working on this product, so we added this link and we surely want to cooperate with other groups. Uh, I've also posted the blockchain three smart contracts in government three applications and informed the government uh, working group if they uh, would like to announce it to their um, meetings and maybe people would like to add some uh, use cases uh, to this or uh, review uh, the whole paper. It's um, uh, completed work and also I would like to ask for the formal way how to put it for a review from the TSE in order to be formal as uh, Chris pointed and also this is a process I would like to follow for the taxonomy we we crafted and now it is a full mind map and the table which uh, is deriving from this mind map so my first question is which is the official way to issue a review uh, request and the second one is uh, that we are trying to uh, point out that uh, we have pages that are working products so we are adding a characteristic on the page title and whatever we think it is finished we wanted to uh, to let the tsc know and follow any formal way to make it uh, formal and official. 
Uh, so my question is how can we um, say that uh, we want to request a review for the blockchain three smart contracts. We are having also a working group meeting next week uh, on Wednesday where I would be more, uh, I would be able to hear more people how the, what do they think and how can we continue from what we have added. So on, on the point on, on process, um, I guess <laughs> probably isn't written down anywhere, um, but, you know, we've been operating under the assumption, I think, that, you know, as working groups get to the point where they're basically finishing a document and they want to publish it, is that they bring it to the TSC for review. Um, and um, I don't know, do we need to, you know, Dan and Brian, should we, update the working group charters to make that a little bit clearer or the working group process. But um, that, I mean, that's really what I was pointing out is it looked to me like the working group had already established, well, we're done with this and we're moving on to the next thing. And in the past with all the other working groups, their, their process had been to get the working group to say, okay, we think this is done. And then they submit it to the TSC for review. Yeah. I felt like that was at least in the, Charter of maybe the architecture working group, but it might not be broadly yeah. Templated For those of you who are engaged on the working group committee that we talked about last time uh, Could you please take note of of that action item and make sure that that's in the, the working group process? Yeah, I'll get it in the add it to the notes right now Thank you. And then Sophia specifically to you, Sorry, go ahead Mick? All I was going to say is just a reminder that that one is on hold pending the life cycle review stuff because there's a lot of overlap in the people who had opinions and I want to get the life cycle stuff done before we start tackling the working group stuff. So I will keep adding to the issues and the discussions to make sure we're covering it. But for the moment, it's going to be um, quiescent. Ooh, okay. Um, Sophia, specifically to your question then, um, usually what we've done in those reviews that have come to the TSC is the, the paper should get circulated on the TSC mailing list and then you would expect um, probably something on the order of a, a month long period where people go in and review it in depth depending on how long or uh, novel it is and provide feedback and there might be multiple rounds of that. Okay, that sounds uh, nice. So I will uh, issue them. Uh, I will send them the, the email with uh, this paper, this article that we have written. And as I, I told you already, we are going to work on it as a working group already. Uh, so everybody is welcome to add and comment for sure. And let's see how this goes. And I will do the same thing with the taxonomy that we think it is a finished product. And we started from uh, this taxonomy. Uh, we created um, a, a list of work products because we want people to be able to work uh, in parallel. Not everybody is interested in the same subject. Some people are interested in the security of smart contracts. Some other uh, in the interoperability. Uh, interoperability. Uh, some others in the architecture, so uh, we crafted um, many working products um, for uh, for the people who expressed their interest in order to be able to add their content and after that to combine all them all of them and create a new uh, working product from them, deriving from separate works from different people. Um, this is what we mainly do here and. I would be more than eager to hear what you think of the working group. We are trying to follow the rules to add the agenda, the notes by the templates and uh, hear the, the, the people, what they, they want, what they need and try to make research uh, in order to find out what are the hot topics and what we should work on. And also, I try to participate, I, I can speak for myself, uh, but I have seen others from the working group do this and we like to do this to, to participate in other working groups in order to see what they do and how can we 
um, have some cooperation on uh, our working products or how can we contribute to their working products. Um, so that's mainly what we are doing um, from, the Feb from February uh, since now, until now. And I'm open for your questions or any of your guidance. Please do. So did you say that, that you were adding a list of new working group work products? Uh, yes, from the taxonomy, that uh, we think that it is a complete product. We have a mind map. If it is, um, if it is easy for you to open the working group in order to, to describe it, because it's a little bit uh, hard to describe by words, we took the taxonomy and created um, a list for each of uh, a, a separate page for this list in order for people to be able to work on uh, each, uh, let's say, bullet of this mind map, each bubble of this mind map as a separate working product in order to create separate working products which will make a full working product. Because some of these refer to, let's say, uh, functional requirements, some other refer to computational requirements, some other I refer to the low area, so these uh, are not uh, um, combined in uh, a full product. They are separate products which, in the end, will be a complete working product. It will derive from the separate working product of uh, each of these uh, concepts, bubbles, in the mind. Okay, so I, I understand that to mean that you are just dividing the work up amongst the team for the existing, something that fits under the existing charter of the working group, if you want. Yes, making smaller packages, yes. Okay, if at some point you want to expand or alter the charter of the working group, then that's a, a good thing to provide to the TSC so that we can have uh, some discussion on that if necessary. Uh, we're surely uh, until now on track. Um, as for the charter, uh, the purpose of the group hasn't changed. We, uh, we are evolving, so we are creating more uh, uh, creative ways for people to participate. Because as I've told you, if, if there is a complete product to work on, such as we did with the blockchain three smart contracts in government, maybe not everybody is interested in this. Uh, so there are many things that uh, we can look from different angles. Some are researchers, some are technical uh, people, some are businessmen, some are, uh, we have a lawyer, uh, who adds uh, content for the low contracts. So we have different perspectives for the same things, but the charter is um, until now uh, followed. And I don't, I don't think that right now it would be the right thing to change it. We have a, a specific uh, charter and scope. Uh, if, but if uh, in the future something might, must change, yes, uh, I will surely do discuss with the other people and see how can we update it and for sure uh, inform you. Okay, wonderful. All right, well, thank you for continuing to volunteer time on the working group and the rest of your working group contributors as well. Um, moving along, I think we have uh, Bobby on the line to talk about the uh, uh, learning materials and documentation working group. Uh, do yes, we have, I thank you, Bobby. Um, uh, do we have any uh, questions for Bobby? And uh, just like we did, while people are thinking of those questions, uh, Bobby, is there anything that you want to highlight, particularly any issues uh, or areas of feedback that you're looking for from the TSC? Um, basically, we spent the last quarter just building out the framework to house documentation and learning materials. Um, we're hoping for guidance, like Sophia said, from the uh, TSC and the marketing department to kind of know what needs to be put in the frameworks. So again, the wiki has a lot of structure to it, but now we need some framework building. Um, so we're looking for guidance there. Membership is low as well. So as soon as we get more members, we'll be able to be more effective. Well, just to highlight one topic. Um, we do have on the wiki page a resource page where people can go and look at open projects 
Um, so we're hoping new members, we've made it easy to onboard with our new member page. We're hoping that new members can uh, get a Linux login quickly, uh, get able to edit the pages um, and know exactly what work needs to be done. For instance, we um, believe this summer we're going to be editing, um, helping Flavia help edit some chapters that she's been working on. Uh, we need to help Burrow with some um, learning documentation. So we do have the framework ready for that. We're just, you know, again, waiting for more members and some guidance on how to get that done. Uh, it happens. I was just talking to a Sawtooth contributor yesterday about content that they developed for the edX course back in the fall of 2018. Do you know if um, if the edX course was updated in that time frame? Um, all I know right now is that Flavia is working on the first three chapters broken out into the basic beginner business course and then um, I know that Salona was mentioning that the remaining technical chapters were all going to be contributed by the different projects themselves. And I think she was working on a framework to get contributors to put in. So all I know is that like, we're trying to work forward on a system to get the um, edits in so people with technical background can uh, look at them and make sure they're accurate. Which Dan, is was, was your question <clears throat> regarding the uh, Sawtooth chapter in the uh, Introduction to Hyperledger Technologies course? It was, it was specifically the simple supply chain content that we have in a GitHub repo, it's like uh, education, Sawtooth simple supply or something like that. There's PDF content in there as well as demo code. Uh, as far as I know, that one is not available. Um, that one never made it. We did make the changes to the, just the Sawtooth chapter, but we didn't do that um, as of when I left. Okay. Uh, so, Bobby, what, what is your handle on, on Rocket Chat? Um, it's, uh, I believe it's Bobby. Okay, easy enough. Um, yes, uh, J-N at the end, B-O-B-B-I-J-N. Okay. Um, if you do go to um, the resource page um, and go to the, um, on our homepage, the resource page, uh, frameworks and tools, and go down to Sawtooth, we are trying to collect all the documentation we can find. Um, so I can show you what we have collected so far, um, and if the Sawtooth people want to go in and edit that. I'm on the resource page now and I don't see a sawtooth. Go down to, um, it's under frameworks um, and tools. Oh, I see. And then sawtooth. Many layers. Yes, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on. So that would be where um, the information we can collect from the working group lines up. And each again project has a, has a page. Okay, great. I will uh, send this over to that uh, contributor. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dan, can I speak? Please. Um, and I guess it's more directed at Mick, but um, the one thing I've seen in both of these reports today is trying to get members is, is an issue or a challenge. So, again, it gets back to working group. Yeah, and I think I mean, getting back to, to your point, I talked to Brian a little bit yesterday about exactly this problem, um, that, that the working groups need to have, I think, I will express my opinion. My opinion is that right now the working groups have to have a stronger sort of reason to be. Um, there has to be a value and influence that can come out of them. And until that happens, it's going to be very difficult to get people to make commitments to something that simply descriptive of what's already going on. So <clears throat> the situations where we've had the best input are those where we've been constructive. So. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I tend to agree very strongly with that sentiment, Mick. Um, <clears throat> and I, I, I don't remember, I can't, I, I'm trying to remember if there was an email and I remember, I don't remember who it was that said it, but I kind of, 
um, resonated with that sort of same thought. And this, this pertains to specifically to this particular working group and that essentially it's competing with the projects that are managing and doing their own documentation. And I, 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 you know, I, I, I see that, you know, we're trying to get the edX teams to source material from the project teams, but the project teams have stuff to do and things to get done. And, and I think they look at this as sort of like, well, you know, okay, but I'm kind of busy. And maybe the thing ought to be a little bit more about how do we ensure that we have a consistent approach to delivering documentation from the various projects, um, especially the DLTs or frameworks or whatever, you know, the things, <laughs> whatever we end up calling them, um, such that, um, you know, they're, they're um, you know, the, the, the documentation is easily consumable and, and, uh, and, and, and we're able to sort of grow our, um, our, our usage and our membership and so forth. Um, and I, I mean, I think right now, if I'm looking at this one, I see it sort of working sort of at cross purposes to the various projects. And I don't know what others think about that, but that's sort of how I feel about this. And I, I'm not saying it's not good work that don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I just think that, you know, we need to be working a little bit more collaboratively as opposed to in silos that are not really talking to one another. So this, this and, and Chris, this does point out exactly the problem, which is that the working groups right now tend to be sitting outside the projects rather yes. than being integrated in the projects. <clears throat> and because of that, there's no way that they can be um, prescriptive. I mean, yeah. th there's no way we can give teeth to the working group until it's the project participants who are the ones that are in the working groups. Um, and, and this is this is the conundrum that we've been discussing is how do you give the working groups I, I hate to use the word but I will authority um, in a way that the projects will accept that authority because they are participants in it and, and I'll just leave it at that I, I don't want to dig into too far into this because we've got other things related to life cycle and a bunch of others mm -hmm. that are that are not independent of this problem and I think we've agreed that we're going to sequence the the um, the concerns by looking at the life cycle first so. And, so and I, go ahead go ahead go ahead Arno. I, I think we should be a bit more agile in how we handle working groups in general I think people will participate if they see value into it. Unfortunately, there is no way to force people. This is open source, it's all voluntary. People participate where they see value in doing so. And so personally, I think we should be much more willing to say, you know what, there's just not enough people interested in doing this right now. Either we close it, I mean, this is a fairly low cost in creating working groups and shutting them down. And I think we should be you know, and I'm not saying this for this particular working group, although I have raised the concern that this in some way competes with the project's documentation efforts. And so I don't want to say I told you so, but there's a little bit of this, uh, you know, involved in this. But, uh, uh, you know, in general, I think as a rule, we should be much more, you know, agile in creating working groups and, you know, stopping them if we don't see anything to do right now. There's not enough momentum, interest, and then recreate them when the interest comes back, if it does. Well, and then, you know, attended to the, and, and or no, it was you, I, I just couldn't recall. Um, but, um, you know, attended to that would be, okay, so but then when we do create a working group, what are we doing to ensure that the project teams are actively going to participate? In other words, we should build that Mick, into the whole life cycle aspect of things that we, yeah, we sort of get exactly. the projects to sort of say, yeah, that's a great idea. We should talk about how to do smart contracts or yeah, that's a great idea. We should, we should get a working group that's looking at, you know, whatever. Yeah. And just, just to be clear with a very concrete example of this, you know, if, if for example, um, uh, you want to claim that your platform provides privacy, that you now have to go to the architecture working group in order to get um, something that their approval for claiming that your project provides privacy. Um, that gives some teeth to the working group 
but it also means that the um, project participants become much more motivated to be a part of that working group in, in order to get the definition as clear as possible so that they know what to do. I mean, that there are some of these ideas that, that might help us get the teeth into it where we can encourage participation precisely because it is the thing that's driving um, you know, integration um, across the project. I, and again, I'm just throwing ideas out there. There's nothing, there's nothing fixed. Um, but I think those are the kind of things that, that I'd like to be able to, to talk about at some point in this, when we get back to the working group parts of it. But would it, would it make sense over time to look at centralizing things like documentation? So there's a working group that does documentation across all the projects. So it's consistent when, when people go to read it things like that, it would also help some of the smaller projects because, um, you know, it would give resources that they may, might not otherwise get and would hold the project back. Brian says hand up for a while. And I think, Mark, you touch on the fundamental tension here, which is um, to what degree does a working group like this um, create materials and in doing that, create them that are hyperledger wide, that are somewhat standardized, that help the smaller projects or to what degree are they really about just trying to set common standards uh, across the different projects so that, because there is like this great documentation call and, and working group within Fabric that's run by Anthony O'Dowd. I want to give credit to, to that process. That seems to work really well. Um, uh, and so Fabric docs are, are in a pretty good shape. Um, but, uh, um, you know, the goal over all of these working groups, right, is to be the glue between our projects, right, across the different projects to, to help harmonize or, or, or set, uh, to, to have in a way that projects help each other too, you know, like in architecture, oh, you're working on that, we're doing this, maybe we should combine efforts or learn from your mistakes or, or that sort of thing. And so um, I went back and looked at the charter for the learning materials uh, working group. And, and it isn't quite clear on, on you know, because it does seem to suggest a lot of content creation um, and then, and and that's obviously a challenge if you don't have people from the projects involved, right? Um, uh, not impossible, but 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 from those involved. And so maybe we just want to involve, evolve in this uh, in for the learning materials development working group, um, kind of specifically what where on that spectrum it aims to lie. Uh, and um, the more that it's about creating content or managing things like the MOOC, the more it needs participants from the projects themselves to be involved. Um, uh, and, and needs to find a way to not to not say this is additive and, and charity and, and it would be nice if, but to say, hey, actually, this is pretty important to the projects and the projects to realize that that's important to them. Hi, it's Bobby. Again, we were just... Um, discussing how we can collect the materials that are out there and make sure they look and feel the way that um, the message we want to portray. So again, the participation is needed um, from the people who are actually developing the materials, especially as they get more technical. Yes, and, and thank you for, for suffering through some of the broader discussion there about working group health, Bobby. Um, I think that, that uh, the, the course of this discussion is also run through here. So uh, thanks for providing the update. And then uh, a little bit of discussion on, on the chat there. If we could get an update on the life cycle committee next week, that would be great. Uh, since we do have several things that are, are starting to stack up aligned with that work or the, the output of that, um, I think that will be helpful for all of us. And let's see here. I think that brings us to the end of our agenda today. Thank you everybody for your time. And we will uh, talk to everybody again next week. Thank you. And thank you, Sophia and Bobby. Thank you. Thank you.